The only way to find a place of acceptance with God is not through religious acts offered in your own merit and in your own strength, but it's found only in and through the blood of God's Son. To, to approach God, I must come by the way of His Son. From Walking in Grace, this is the Straight Truth Podcast, Christian Truths in an Increasingly Secular World. Welcome again to the Straight Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Philpott, and as always, I'm joined by Pastor Richard Caldwell of Founders Baptist Church. Now, with the podcast this time, we're going to do things a little differently. Instead of me asking Pastor Richard the question, we actually have a small, live audience of mostly young people who have important topics they'd like to ask Pastor Richard. So we hope you'll enjoy this new format for Season 14 of Straight Truth. But if you have a question you'd like to ask Pastor Richard, as always, please leave a comment below this video or submit a question on our website, straighttruth.net. With that, let's get to the question for this episode. In an earlier sermon, you said that unbelievers are unable to pray. Does that mean that God just doesn't hear their prayers? If so, when you are saved, does that line just open? What happens if you do not know if you're a Christian in the first place? Thank you for that. Yeah, um, what I'm describing is an ability for prayer that is received through salvation that doesn't belong to people by nature. So for just a moment, thinking about prayer from the human side. A believer is someone who not only has a new nature, they've been reconciled to God. They've gone from being estranged from God by their sin to having all their sins forgiven so that now they've been reconciled to God. And in that sense, they, they now stand on praying ground. They have a relationship with the God whose face they seek. Now, in term, let, let's pause for just a moment on that part of it and let's move to, to the, the God side of the, of the question. God is all-knowing, He is always present. He hears everything. He knows everything. He has no problem understanding what a lost person is saying in the name of God. So it's not like God doesn't hear their prayers in the sense of I have no awareness of it. The question is reception. The question is, is he dealing with unbelievers in the same way that he's dealing with believers? And the answer is no. Why? Because the unbeliever is still estranged from God based on sin, still under the wrath of God, under the judgment of God. The unbeliever is not a child of God. Uh, the unbeliever doesn't have, for example, the intercession described in the New Testament that takes place on an internal level. This, we have the Spirit of God, believers do. He's interceding on behalf of believers with groanings too deep to utter. So even as we pray, there is an intercessor who's internal to us, who's in our lives, interceding for us. We have a great high priest in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is interceding for us at the right hand of God all the time. Is that is that as is that true with unbelievers as well? No. They don't have the great high priest. They've not been reconciled to God. They don't have the indwelling spirit of God who intercedes for, the, for them. They're, they don't have the access that we have because of the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10 speaks to this, the 19th verse. It says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that He opened for us, through the curtain, that is, through His flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near. That's, that's prayer language. That's to approach the throne of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. I mean, know that you're forgiven. Know that you have this access. Know that you are welcomed. Know that the blood of, of Christ has ushered you into the very presence of God. You now have a standing in God's grace. This is where you always abide. None of that is true for an unbeliever. And in that sense, God has no regard for their prayers. God is not going to deal with them as He deals with His children. A couple of passages that give voice to that. 1 Peter 3, 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The righteous and the evil. Okay, obviously referring now for a moment to Hebrews 10, 
the confidence that we gain from the blood of Jesus, that's not a confidence based on our performance. That's a confidence based on the finished work of Christ. That's, not, that, that's a confidence found in the full and finished forgiveness that we've been given in Christ. So when he talks about his face being against those who do evil, he's talking about unbelievers. His ear open to the prayers of the righteous, those who know him. His face set against those who do not know him. Proverbs 28, thinking now about an Old Testament passage that would address this. Proverbs 28 and the ninth verse says this, if one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So even, even these religious acts that lost people engage in, including prayer, Old Testament context, you bring an offering to God or you offer a prayer to God. God doesn't have regard for that. He doesn't accept that. It's an abomination to him. New Testament context, the same is true with every kind of religious act a lost person tries to offer to God. It is stained with sin. It is unacceptable. It hasn't been sanctified by the blood of his son. It is the best that lost man has to offer in his own righteousness, and it is utterly abhorrent to the God who is absolutely holy. So when we say God doesn't hear the prayer of the lost man, we're not talking about awareness. God has no problem knowing what you're saying. We're talking about acceptance. And we have to know, we do know as sinners who've been saved, but the sinner has to know. The only way to find a place of acceptance with God is not through religious acts offered in your own merit and in your own strength, but it's found only in and through the blood of God's Son. To, to approach God, I must come by the way of His Son. And that means looking to Jesus as Lord and Savior. And until I do that, my prayer is not acceptable to God. It's not been sanctified by the blood of the one whom he, he gave for the forgiveness of sins. But let a lost man or woman cry out to God for that forgiveness. Let them cry out to God with faith in God's Son. And that's a prayer that will be received and answered with eternal life. I'm thinking of, um, of these situations where we come to church and we've um, maybe had a full day of sin on Saturday before. Mm. Right. And, and when you go to church, you have this feeling like, I don't even belong here. It's right. not that you're not a believer, but I don't even belong here. How can I sit and worship? But maybe the same thing goes with prayer. How, it, we, we get this feeling sometimes that, okay, we've sinned. How can I even pray to God? Does he even hear yes. what I'm praying? How does God deal with us? E even Christians who are praying, even though we're, we're you know, uh, ripe with sin. Yeah. Um, there's a twofold way I would answer that. All, all, all of our Christian life has to be lived out in the knowledge of the full, free, complete, finished work of God's Son. If any of us, and this is where we so, I think, underestimate our sinfulness. Mm. If any of us were to try to stand before God in our very best moments, if it were based solely and purely on my righteousness, my performance, in my very best moments, my life is not, doesn't meet the standard. So, so any Sunday, any day of worship, I have to go in the confidence of Hebrews 10, a confidence that's found not in my performance, but found in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's how, that's how I exist. That's how I live. However, having said that, we find a kind of discipline that belongs to the Christian life that is a fatherly discipline. And there are times that we can find our for example, our prayer life hindered because of sin that I'm not willing to acknowledge and confess. Okay? That is not me now having less of a righteousness from the standpoint of justification. If I've been declared right with God on the finished work of His Son by faith, I, I stand before Him in that way all the time. That never changes. That is not shifting. I'm, I'm always acceptable to God in His Son if I am really in His Son. I'm always acceptable to God and His Son on my worst days, just like on my best days. My worst moments as much as my best moments. But God is my Father, disciplines and scourges every son whom He receives. And if I, for example, I'm thinking now about what Peter said to husbands regarding the way they treat their wives. If I'm going to mistreat my wife and think that it won't hinder my prayer life, 
I've got another thing coming because God will discipline me as a son mm -hmm. until I begin to treat my wife in a way that honors him. So there are times that we meet with leanness in our prayer life. We meet with leanness in our walk with God because we're not confessing and forsaking our sins. So though they are fully forgiven, mm -hmm. from a fatherly point of view, He loves us too much to let us go on in that which dishonors Him and would destroy us. And He will bring pressures to bear upon our lives to turn us out of the way of sin and onto the pathway of what pleases Him. And one of the ways that He does that is sometimes He allows us to meet with a leanness in our spiritual lives to say to us, hey, you, you can't ignore this. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I do want to encourage people with one other thought. That is, you can even misunderstand that leanness. Th th that is to say, there are times that you can feel lean. By leanness, I just mean like God is at a distance, like something is wrong. You can have that kind of feeling and there'd be nothing wrong. You're, you're feel you don't measure this by your feelings. You measure it by scripture. If I'm mistreating my wife, I'll be able to know that not by a feeling, but by what the Bible says compared to how I'm behaving. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm behaving in a way that dishonors God and abuses her or mistreats her, and then I experience a leanness in my prayer life, hey, there's probably a connection there. Mm -hmm. But if I get up tomorrow morning and I'm not conscious of any sin in my life that, that I have not confessed, if I'm willing to deal with whatever sin is in my life, and then I sense a thinness or a leanness in my walk with God, it likely has to do with something else. It could be my physical constitution. There are times we feel better than at other times. Sometimes your feelings are determined by that. Or it could be a father encouraging me in another way, which is come to me, mm -hmm. come to me. In other words, just using that sense of leanness to draw me nearer to himself. My son or daughter, when they were little, would get up in the morning and say, hey dad, well, they're not doing anything wrong, hey. Well then what do I say? Hey, come get in my lap. Mm -hmm. Don't say, hey, from across the room, come over here, I wanna hold you. And sometimes that even that sense of leanness is, is like God saying to us, come get in my lap. Don't just acknowledge me in some superficial way this morning. Spend some time with me. So the Lord uses all these things to drive us to himself as his children, but the way we measure it all is the word of God. What does the Bible say? Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, we'd love to have you share this episode with friends and family. And the easiest way to do that is by going to our website, straighttruth.net, and subscribing to one of our social media channels like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways to help us to continue to produce this podcast, again, go to our website, straighttruth.net. Now, Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.